Hello, fellow investors. Welcome to Ritter on Real Estate, where we teach you how to passively invest like a pro. Today, I've got a guest. His name is Adam Riddle, and he's a broker and investor based out of Denver, Colorado. He's closed over 500 transactions worth in excess of $550 million in the multifamily sector. And he's grown and led his team of brokers toward a 400% increase in revenue over a four-year period. So Adam, thank you for joining today. Very happy to have you here and uh, to hear a little bit about yourself. So why don't you start by, by telling the group a little about yourself and, and your background? Perfect. Thanks for having me. Always uh, appreciate coming on and trying to help educate people. Uh, my name is Adam Riddle. I'm one of the principals and co-founder of Nexus Commercial Realty. Based out of Denver, Colorado, we are a, um, some people would call it boutique, but we're a boutique uh, brokerage shop that focuses solely on the multifamily sector and development of multifamily. Um, we just started our company about three and a half years ago. Uh, we do what we would call mid-market transactions, so not chasing the uh, kind of uh, huge class A type product type. Do a lot of older products, um, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 units, value add. And um, I've seen a dynamic, I've been doing it in Colorado since 08. So I've seen a very uh, dynamic market over the last 10 years here in Colorado. And it's been real fun. Uh, this year has been a bit of a challenge, but uh, that's okay. It's not, uh, it's not all bad here for sure. That, that's good. Yeah. I mean, from what I've seen in Denver, I mean, and all of Colorado, you guys are still growing like crazy. So I think there's a lot of good things happening out there. Yeah, I feel like um, we almost are a little bit of a benefactor of some of the things that are happening in some of the coastal cities with people working from home and having the ability to do that permanently. People are moving to Denver and Salt Lake and some of these other cities mm -hmm. that maybe were uh, not options before and getting to choose more of a, of a different lifestyle. So our, our real estate's doing really well, our, our uh, single family uh, just personal residence market is on fire and uh, the mountains are going pretty nuts right now too. So a, a lot of sectors in, in the Colorado market are doing really well at this point. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. You guys actually be a net benefactor of what's going on. And so what is it that, um, you know, ob obviously we you know, we talked a little bit about the, the migration, you know, that, that's coming in. I mean, what are other things that are attracting investors into your market? I mean, what, why are you seeing um, so much attention come in to, to Denver? Yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. So, you know, in 07, 08, it was still probably considered a kind of a flyover city. So kind of, we were still considered an, an, uh, a cow town, if you will. Um, in this last cycle, which we came out of kind of the downturn of 08, 09 pretty early in comparison to some other, you know, maybe Midwest cities or, or Phoenix or Las Vegas that got hit really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, we came out pretty early and we, you know, we've had a very lo a long trajectory of growth. Um, and I think part of that is due to the continued immigration of, of you know, people into the state. And I think our um, government and economic growth people do a really good job at going out and attracting top businesses that are looking to relocate out of uh, other cities and, and, and incentivizing them to move here. Um, you know, I think we are, it's a generational thing, but I think we're benefits of uh, people that are coming out of school and saying, um, you know, I think the old, old adage was you found a job and then you moved there and now it's, I, I want to live there. I'll just move there and then I'll find the job. I think we're, mm -hmm. we're benefactors of that uh, for sure. I think we have a very, very diversified economy, um, which they've, you know, worked for 20, 30 years over. So if one sector's, you know, oil and gas may be hurting, that's not going to take down our, our, our city, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. But I still think the biggest thing that everybody moves here for, the reason I moved here is the thing that we have, we have out West, which is mountains to play in. Yeah, absolutely. That that's a huge amenity that uh, that you can't build, right? Yeah. So, what what should investors expect in Denver? You know, when if you're looking in the market, I mean, what are what are price per doors? What are cap rates that we're seeing? What kind of returns are fo should folks be expecting? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. So, our shop we have an office here in Denver and a shop uh, in Colorado Springs. Um, but we work essentially Fort Collins and Greeley, kind of our, our northern border up against Wyoming, down to call it Pueblo, which is a little south of Colorado Springs. 
Um, and then we sprinkle in a little bit of the mountain resort communities, um, but the majority of the population and the majority of the transactions on the multifamily side are going to kind of happen up and down the I-25 corridor from uh, Fort Collins through the metro area down to Colorado Springs and Pueblo. Um, obviously, that's a lot of diverse neighborhoods and demographics and um, incomes, um, but, you know, starting from central Denver, you know, main and main type addresses going for sub five caps to um, a Greeley, a Pueblo, a, you know, some parts of Colorado Springs or, you know, can be six and a half, seven caps. Um, so it's a very wide variety, even in just in the Denver metro area, not even uh, accounting for some of the other uh, cities around. It can vary uh, drastically. I mean, there's different uh, pockets, even of, uh, you know, one of our suburbs, Lakewood. I happen to live in Lakewood, but geographically is a very large city and has a lot of different kind of pockets of apartments in it. Mm -hmm. And some of them are better than others. Um, so it can vary, uh, very quite, quite widely. I mean, we are considered a tier one city for Fannie and Freddie. So if that's the type of debt people are going after, you know, you can still get great debt here, no matter kind of what area of the city it's in, it's still considered tier one. So that's always a, a plus. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So what type of transactions are you seeing happening? Um, you know, what type of properties are, are folks buying? I mean, are, are you seeing trends come through of what investors are liking right now or, or where people are focusing? Yeah, so we've, um, you know, we've had a very busy back half of the year. Um, spring and early summer was, uh, was playing to keep deals together and uh, try to get extensions when, you know, buyers and lenders were bailing at the last minute. And um, we kind of knew the the market would, we, we had a feeling, I guess, the market would come back and um, it's come back and it's uh, come back very dramatically. I think this month will be our busiest month of our company all time on closings. Um, at one point, a couple of weeks ago, I think we had 44 projects under contract um, throughout our company. So it's coming back. I would say that the, one of the bigger trends that we're talking about right now is we're looking at our stats and, and, and closings and who's buying. Uh, it's a lot of new capital. To, to the state. Mm -hmm. um, we closed a project with a Canadian group uh, last week, closing a project with a South American group uh, next week, and um, just closed yesterday on a eight and a half million dollar deal with a new group on, on a Cairo Springs project. So it's a really a trend to uh, new people with a new focus on Denver. And I don't know if they're following that in migration. Um, uh, you know, I don't really under, totally understand why that is, or if just Denver's been on the map and people are seeing this maybe as an opportunity to beat out some of the usual suspects that maybe have been playing um, and, and, or the usual suspects are considering um, they should get a discount because maybe collections are a little off. So it's giving opportunities to some of the people that um, don't currently have assets in town to come in and, and compete a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's interesting. I mean, you're, are you seeing that occur I mean, since COVID? Have you seen discounted pricing uh, or is it really more of a, a buyer expectation for the locals that you're not, uh, you're not seeing that bid ask spread come together to, to complete a deal. I mean, what's been happening since COVID as, as far as pricing? Um, pricing was aggressive going into COVID, just like many places in the country. I mean, we, we were aggressively priced on many things. Um, so, you know, for the ones that were too aggressive, I mean, there definitely had to be some price adjustments if they actually wanted to transact. Um, but we haven't seen a ton of, a ton of movement in pricing, um, to be perfectly honest. I think people still consider, our market um, and our asset type being multifamily, a very safe place to put money. Um, mm -hmm. I think it was, you know, going in 08, 09, 2010, it was where, you know, the old adage of people still needed a place to live. You know, the, the person leasing some office space to run a full, uh, you know, small personal business, maybe didn't need that office space. They can work from their basement or that retail person maybe didn't need as big of a floor plate on the retail, but people always need a place to live. Um, so I think a lot of people are, are um, you know, refocusing, if you will, on the multifamily sector. Um, and I think Denver is just one of those places and Colorado is one of those places that um, has just really kind of established itself as a, as a, a place where people 
uh, like to travel to. I mean, I'm sure people, if you have an investment on in Colorado, you like to come see it, especially during the winter time <laughs> and you can go hit the slopes right. at the same time. Uh, so I think we're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of that type money, but we have not seen a major adjustment in prices. Although we get calls every day from buyers that would love to see that. Uh, we have just not seen, um, you know, uh, you know, a, maybe a percent or two on some uh, certain cases, but there was a deal yesterday that sold for 110% of its list price. So mm -hmm. with competing offers, you know, 12 competing offers and no contingencies and all that kind of fun stuff. So, so Denver hasn't slowed down. If anything, it's just as hot as ever. That's what it sounds like. Just as hot as ever. Uh, I would say, I mean, it's, uh, you know, hopefully the year finishes strong and, um, but talking to some of our counterparts, they feel like 2021 is going to be one of the biggest years ever for apartment transactions in Colorado. So wow. not, well, great. Not would that, 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 uh, continues to happen. Definitely. So Adam, what was it that got you into multifamily to start off with? I mean, you could have focused on, on any asset class in, in real estate. How'd you land in multifamily? Uh, kind of an interesting story. Um, I uh, did not, I don't have any background in multifamily. I never studied real estate to be perfectly honest. I'm in school for marketing. Um, I just uh, wanted to get into something in real estate and I felt like the the uh, income potential was high. It was more of a, if you put the effort in, you're going to reap the rewards. And um, so I was kind of drawn to real estate in general with that. And then I honestly just locked into um, answering an ad actually off Craigslist when people used to look for jobs on Craigslist for a team, a successful multifamily team. I was looking for kind of a runner, goal caller, put together package guy. So um, again, very fortunate to, to answer that ad and be the one chosen and got to learn for some uh, very seasoned professionals in the business. And um, so honestly kind of lucked into it, but now as my wife would tell you, it's, it's my passion. It's what I, I, I love to do. I would um, work two, two times the amount of hours if I, if I didn't have a wife and kids at home, cause I really like what I do. And I think it's interesting and fun and um, strategizing with people that are learning, learning or trying to grow their wealth through real estate investing is just a really, you know, fulfilling thing for me. No, that's great. So what advice would you give to, to new investors as they're, you know, as they're coming into to the Denver market or Colorado market and, and looking around and what are some things that you can tell our investors? Um, I mean, obviously if you're looking on your own or if you're looking uh, at a deal through uh, a sponsor per se, I mean, obviously I always say do your due diligence on whatever sponsor you're um, looking at a deal through. But if you're looking at deals on your own, um, I mean, as any city um, that has a, a decent population, figure out the pocket, figure out what you're looking at, what's going on in that particular pocket. Um, just because it says Denver, Denver's a big city. Um, so we have anything from the highest of the high to kind of workforce housing, all of the city of Denver, not much less the, the suburbs of Denver. Mm -hmm. Um, so really trying to figure out what that pocket is, what it's like, um, how many, what competition is in, is in that, you know, immediate area and how it's performed over the last two or three years. Um, I think that's some things that I would really dig into and just the demographic and, um, you know. Those are probably the things I would tackle first. Sure, sure. And are there are there strategies that you're seeing um, investors employ? Are, are there are there common themes? Whether it's you know, kind of a core play, whether it's uh, distressed or value add. I mean, are there things that you're seeing uh, be successful in your market? Yeah. So the fun thing about what we do is we get to talk to a bunch of different people that have a lot of different strategies. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll work with a family office that's uh, very location driven, not as, uh, not as cash on cash or IRR driven because it's, you know, their money and it's a generational thing. And it's more about putting 40, 50% down and, and, and passing it on to the next generation type investing which mm -hmm. for them, obviously that's a very different thing that we're, we're looking for and showing that person versus, you know, a, a syndicator that's going to go out and find the deal and then go raise, raise that money through, through their network. Um, you know, things are expensive here. Um, it's the last 10 years and just continue to go up, up and up. And 
So some people are, are, are struggling with kind of where prices are these days. Mm-hmm. Our opinion is, is there's still opportunity out there. Um, it's maybe not the bread and butter value ad play that it once was where you can buy it for a hundred a door and put 30 door into it. It's worth 150 or 160 a door. It may be not be that sort of bread and butter, but there's value value to be had. Um, I think it's more on the operational side these days than it is you need to go put a bunch of money into it. Um, there may be some cosmetic stuff, but I think a lot of people, um, a lot of owners these days, they may have owned it for four or five years and are just not paying attention as much as a new owner. And I think some people can get some value out of just coming in and being a little more on top of third party management and having a better strategy going at it um, that way. So seeing some success there. Um, interestingly enough, we're seeing people that are buying core plus that were value add buyers because they feel like the spread in between value add and core these days is not wide enough in Denver, mm-hmm. but they'd rather have a newer building in a great location and pay a little less cap rate. Um, so that strategy is what some people are looking for. So we get a lot of different strategies from a lot of different people. And I think at the end of the day, it's the capital that you have and what you're trying to accomplish with it. Is it monthly cash flow? Is it appreciation? Is it you know long-term hold investing and safe? Um, you know, obviously every real estate deal has risk that are associated with it, but mm-hmm. uh, different capital, I think, has different needs and, and goals at the end of the day. Sure. So you said something to me before we started recording. You, you said one of your one of the best deals you've seen was on like a two cap and that there can be a lot of money made um, even in a low cap rate environment. You expand on that a little bit and, and tell the listeners, I think that's a common misconception folks have that, you know, you, you can't buy in a low cap rate market. Sure. Yeah. So no, I was, uh, we were d- discussing some good deals and uh, we get a lot of phone calls from people inquiring about the market. And I love to talk about our market and what's going on and, mm-hmm. and you know, what, what we're seeing and, um, just to set expectations because some people still feel like Denver maybe should be trading for a higher cap rate, but it's, it's not very high in comparison to, you know, it's, it's higher than San Francisco and Seattle and some of these other major markets, but it's not, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're not trading seven caps here in the metro area very often. So, mm-hmm. you know, a, a lot of people get focused on cer- certain things, whether that be cap rate or what is the cash on cash return going in, and uh, my comment earlier was some of the best deals we've ever done were like two gaps because they had a story to them. So my advice would just be, if it's a low cap rate, doesn't necessarily mean it's not a good deal. Try to figure out if there's a story. Maybe there's not a story. A seller is just expecting a two cap and that's unrealistic and great. But um, I think some people overlook some potential opportunities because that going in cap rate isn't, you know, at their their threshold that they're trying to hit. Um, and I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of two caps, but um, don't overlook some of those because that might be some great opportunity um, for an investor to come in and have a really good value add story to it. Yeah, I think your point is is about understanding the market, right, and understanding. Not just looking at face value of numbers, but understand what the story is behind it. Because if it's for whatever reason the property is two hundred dollars below market rent, um, obviously the cap rate is going to show lower than um, if it was really at at market, right? So there might be yeah. real opportunity there. Um, you just have to do the extra diligence, kind of vet that out, right? Exactly. So you've got to learn what the the rest of the neighborhood's charging. I mean, you you know. You, you can't always buy just on pro forma, but you also got to understand if there's upside and, and how achievable it is. And, um, you know, if they're, you know, what we run into because we, you know, we're, we don't sell 200 unit class A apartment buildings that is, you know, institutionally ran and has perfect books and records. We sell a lot of the mom and pop type uh, projects and, you know, the way everybody runs their property is different and the way they categorize repairs and maintenance may be different and, so it's really trying to dig into all that and understanding uh, what you're really looking at, I think, is where people might, uh, you know, find a little uh, a little deal that nobody else thinks is a deal that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So are there are there certain parts of the, you know, of your territory, whether it's Denver, Colorado Springs, wherever you are, are there certain places that you're seeing opportunities these days or certain areas you would suggest people look into? Um, 
You know, I think there's opportunity in a, in a lot of different places. I mean, Caro Springs, we've been uh, working in that market for seven or eight years at this point, but um, had a physical presence with an office and, and brokers in that market for uh, about three years now. And um, that's just been kind of an overlooked market. Um, even some of the Denver investors we work with, you know, five years ago, you'd say, hey, look, Caro Springs, and they just say no. I think it's not that far away. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it's kind of been overlooked a little bit and they have not delivered as much new supply. They're definitely building, but not at the rate, you know, the metro area is. And they've done a good job at diversifying their economy and it usually trails Denver by a few years. So I feel like there's there's still um, some, good, some good growth down there. Um, I'm always biased to the west side of the metro area because that's where I've always lived. I feel like if people are moving to town, they're moving to town because of the mountains. So the closer they can be to them with that reason of being close enough to downtown, mm-hmm. the better. Um, so, and Lakewood is our biggest suburb on the, on the Western side of the Metro area. They've passed a no growth initiative, which we can talk for a long time about that, but essentially capping the amount of new homes and new uh, multifamily units so I feel like anything that's an existing asset out there is going to have, you know, a long-term um, uh, advantage being that you can't add a bunch of new units to the market because uh, they're not going to let you. Gotcha. So in Lakewood specifically, there's restricted supply. In Lakewood and Golden, which is another, uh, you know, one of our Western suburbs. So a lot mm-hmm. of the Western half of the metro area has uh, restrictions in place. So, Again, if you want to live on the west side, you're moving here from New York or Boston or whatever, and you want to live on the west side of town, um, you know, there, there's limited, we'll, we'll continue to be limited options moving forward as we can only deliver uh, 1% of the, the household doors a year. Gotcha. Very interesting. Well, those are good tips for folks to, to dig in further if they're interested in Colorado. I appreciate that. Yeah. So on every show, we, we like to round things out with a session called Keys to Success. We've got a few questions I want to run by you, Adam, and get your thoughts. The first one is, what's one question that every investor uh, should be asking as they look at a deal? Ooh, good question. Uh, I always like to know the occupancy history. Um, so great, you have a, a fully occupied building today, but you know, what is the, the, the history of the occupancy there? Not that that makes or breaks the deal, but just understanding what that looks like. Do they have a lot of turnover? Is that because the street's busy? Or is that, you know, there could be a lot of different factors that go into it that may be harder to, harder to understand just by looking at a profit and loss in a rental. So understanding the occupancy history. Mm-hmm. So not just looking at current financials and current rent roll, but getting historicals as well and comparing what's been going on. Yeah. And what does it tell you uh, if you're seeing a property where you're where you're seeing the uh, occupancy, you know, go up and down, or, or maybe there was a slump a while back? I mean, what what are things that that might tell you to look out for? Um, that maybe there's crime in the neighborhood. Maybe uh, you know, it's on top of a, a busy street, and people originally think that that's not a big deal, but once they move in, they realize like, hey, this kind of is not not great um, that there's other bad tenants in the property that are forcing maybe some good tenants to leave because they're up late at night and making a bunch of noise. Um, and lastly, which happens a lot or sometimes the managers just not, not responsive or not doing their job. So it actually could look actually could be an opportunity for a potential buyer as well. Gotcha. Interesting. And then what are you most proud of in your career? Uh, most proud is we've, uh, we started, uh, my partner, I started this company after, uh, 10 years in the business three and a half years ago, and we're at 20 people and we'll, we'll do probably 80, 90 transactions this year and, um, uh, and growing. And so, uh, being able to kind of start for, with, uh, with two people and grow it in this amount of time and have, uh, some pretty good success is, uh, it's, it's been very fun and, uh, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Congrats, man. That's great growth. And then what book should everybody be reading? <laughs> so just reached over and, and got mine out of the briefcase. So <laughs> this is called the, the Buddha and the Badass. So essentially um, talking about taking some of uh, the practices 
of a Buddha and turning them into making your career successful. So always trying to get better and learn and uh, figure out how, how to continue to um, get better at the craft. Very good. And then lastly, what is your number one key to success? Um, number one key to success. Um, I think for me, it's, um, time management. I mean, I think Mm -hmm. there's only so much time in the day. And so figuring out what's, what's a priority and what's not, and, and, and sometimes saying no to some things, um, that, um, or passing them on, you know, certain projects that, I'm just not going to be able to put the time and effort into it that I, I feel like it needs and being able to have a, a team behind me that I'm confident in that I can, I can uh, pass the baton on and, and know that it's going to be taken care of. Um, so time management is always the, a constant battle and a struggle um, with, with any successful real estate broker. I, I feel like, so trying to, con- and it's a daily, a daily thing, but continuing to ma- try to master that and, um, and still have a life. You know, we, we all have a short amount of time on this earth. We need to be with our family and friends and, and all that kind of good stuff too. So, yeah, very good. Great, great advice. Great advice for everybody. So Adam, how can folks get a hold of you if they want to reach out and um, learn more about your, what you're doing or maybe invest in, in Colorado? Yeah. So uh, our website is uh, www.nexus, which is in cr.com. My uh, email is a riddle. That's R I D D L E at nexus n e x u s dash c r dot com. Uh, happy to just chat about the market in general. Um, we send out quarterly updates and monthly snapshots on different sub markets. Um, can add somebody to an email list or whatever they'd like. We, we send all of our projects out on, on our email list. So happy to uh, chat or uh, add anybody to our list that would like some more information on Colorado. Awesome. Well, Adam, thanks again for being a guest on the show. Thanks for teaching us a little bit about your market there out in Denver and Colorado. And uh, I think you brought a lot of value to the listeners today. So again, thank you for being on the show. 